Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and I post sewing and crafting tutorials here on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the ever popular car seat poncho. And this is super handy because unlike a coat that you have to take on and off every single time you buckle your child into their car seat in order for them to be safe, the car seat poncho can be left on and it does not interfere with the buckles at all so it keeps your child warm and they are safe all at the same time but before we get into the tutorial if you haven't already make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below and also hit the bell notification next to it as well so that you get notified every single time a new video goes up and now let's get right on to the materials that you need to make the car seat poncho you will need about one yard each of two different materials. I will have the measurements listed on my website that I use to make my daughter's poncho and I would consider it to be about a size 2T slash 3T. So if your child is about that size, you can use the same measurements that I used and if not, then you will need to get about a yard and a quarter of each fabric if you need to make yours larger than I did. Once you have your materials, you need to make these two simple pattern pieces. And like I said, I will have all the measurements and everything, all the info you need, listed out on my website and you can find the direct link in the upper corner of the screen in the information icon. Lay your first material out the way it comes off the bolt with a fold on one side and the selvages lined up together at the other. If you place your pattern on like that, you will have a lot of fabric waste. So you want to refold the fabric so the selvages are no longer lined up and one end is extending out further, but you still have enough room for your pattern to fit on if it's lined up with the fold. Then fold your fabric in half again. I made sure the short side is on the outside. So it should look like this with two folded edges on one corner, a big fold along the other, then along the bottom your selvage edges and the longer excess bit. Place your pattern so the small cutout curve is over the big folded corner and the straight sides are lined up with the edges with the folds. Carefully cut only along the small curve and the outer big curve. When you unfold it, you'll have a piece resembling a donut. I like to use the first one to cut out the second to make sure they are exactly the same. So lay it flat on your second piece and cut along the inner and outer circles. I know the inner circle looks small right now, but trust me, it will work out. Take a long straight edge and cut straight up from the bottom to the center circle. Then go in and carefully curve the edges of the cuts. Use the leftover fabric to cut out two hood pieces from each fabric. This is why it was so important to be as conservative as possible with the material earlier. Sew along the curved edge of each set using a half inch seam allowance. Now we are going to be working with the straight front edges of the hoods. So open each set up and put the right sides together lining up that seam from before. Make sure the seam allowances are going in opposite directions to reduce the bulk and pin or clip the two layers together. Then sew along the entire U shape. Flip it right sides out and top stitch along the seam you just sewed then continue sewing along the bottom edge just to make it easier to work with in the next step. Doesn't that hood look nice? Grab one of the body pieces and open up the front slit a little. You aren't stretching the fabric, just shifting it so the small circle is more of an oval. Line up the hood with the opening with the same fabrics touching. Clip them together in just a few spots near the middle. The easiest way to attach the hood is to start in the middle and sew to one edge, adjusting the layers as you go. Then start back in the middle and sew to the other edge. Now it's time to sew everything together. Lay the two pieces right sides together with the hood in between. You may notice the seam across my gray material. If you want to know more about that, then watch my Sew Your Stash video that I posted recently and that will be linked up in the information icon as well. When they are lined up, clip in a few places, but don't worry too much about getting it all lined up because you will need to adjust things as you go. Then sew around the inner curve, down the straight bit, 
all the way around the outside and back up into the other straight area. You need to leave about 8 inches in the straight side open to turn everything through. It should look like this and as you can see there is the hole for turning. Reach in through the hole until you can grab the other end of the poncho and pull it all the way through. Poke out the corners and make sure everything looks good. Then turn in the edges of the opening and sew it closed. And keep top stitching all the way around the entire thing. The last thing to do is add your closure. You can go with velcro or a couple of buttons and buttonholes, but I decided to use plastic snaps. I use this snap setter to put them in and it's super easy. There will be a link below if you want to check it out. And there you have it. Like I said, this car seat poncho is cute, practical, and not hard to make. When it's time to put your kiddo in their car seat, you flip the back part up over the top of the seat and buckle the straps under the poncho. They stay warm in and out of the car during the winter. Make sure to like, pin, and share this video if you enjoyed it and to help the Whitney Sews family grow to 100,000 subscribers. If you want to see another project that uses a very similar pattern, you can check out my Circle Skirts 3 Easy Ways video that will be linked right over to the side here. And below that, I will have a playlist full of beginner friendly projects. Yeah! Then come back next Wednesday for a new video and until then, happy sewing! Yay!